It feels really hard to be a human right now. I've been having a rough two weeks. The type of weeks where every time I get to the subway, it feels like the doors are closing in my face or the wrong train is arriving. Times like this can be paralyzing. It's easy to retreat within yourself and just shut down from the anxiety, the constant news, the panic and the unknown, all the doom and gloom that seems to be impending upon us. So here's what I'm doing as an average person with an average job, trying to make it through my day to day and cause no harm to the people around me and be able to show up empathetically. Please watch this video through the lens of a self-care mindset. This is in no way saying that this is all the action you should be taking. And this is just how you can insulate yourself and take care of yourself so you can show up for those around you. Walking into a Barnes and Nobles was bizarre because it was somehow exactly the same, even though I had never been to this specific location before. I haven't been in a Barnes and Nobles since I was in high school, so this was really a nostalgic trip. I started reading that book and this particular quote in one of the short stories, it's about a science teacher. It goes like all off the rails, but out of context, I'm taking this quote. I showed the class this slide. I drew it myself. First, the good news I said, we're doomed. Our planet is dying, our universe is dying, our friends, our family, everyone we'd ever met, ever known, everyone we ever will know, all our distant progeny, who are thousands of generations away from even being born, all of us are slowly, slowly dying, dying, dying. I showed this slide. And then I said, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say good news? At this point, my lecture notes instructed me to pause for laughter. Nobody laughed. I paused anyway. But there is good news, I continued, and that is this. Science will live on after we're all dead. Science will survive with or without our attempts to understand it. Science doesn't care. Like a callous ex-lover, science won't miss you. And sure, maybe that's a little scary, but isn't it also exciting? Now, that's not exactly like the most inspirational, inspiring quote that I could have picked, but I think it's super interesting to see that a book that I'm reading that was published a while ago, I think it's like four or five years old, if not longer than that, um, can still relate to how I'm feeling right now. And I think it's really important to look for those parallels in our literature and to remind ourselves that it's not our sole individual responsibility as the average human being, or in my case, the average American, to solve the problems of the world and to put that kind of anxiety and blame on your shoulders. You're just going to take away the joy from your day to day life. I'm not saying ignore. I'm just saying you need to mitigate the damage that the news and the world can do to your psyche because I don't know how else you're going to survive. If you want to make someone happy and instantly boost your own day as well, give someone random that you don't know a compliment on the street. For the day-to-day -day things that we need, we've been going to physical retail stores more and more. So today we went to Harry's on the Upper West Side to buy a new pair of running sneakers. Evan got new sneakers and we also learned a new trick on how to tie our shoes from the really helpful sales associate. Alright, so what's the deal, yo? What's the runner tie? Okay, so he went through this. Uh-huh. the tongue. Can you make my tongue straight in my shoe? Yeah. And then he went over. No, under. Yeah, well, like over and through. So it's like this. Oh, wow. And it locks in place now. That does feel like my ankle's more secure. Yeah. Wow.
As an adult, it's really hard to keep up hobbies and friendships. So a good way to do that is to combine the two.